Welcome back, Nerd Squad. Spider-Man is a comic book series and a character that is known for being witty and funny, so he's not someone we associate with the word scary naturally. You don't think initially of the horror genre when you think of Spider-Man, but there are lots of villains within the Spider-Verse that evoke a feeling of terror. Also, it's a little weird that we don't find Spider-Man more horrific when you consider that in a way his origin sounds a bit like a monster story. Peter Parker was bitten by a radioactive spider and transformed into a part spider part human superhero. Granted, he doesn't look like a spider, at least not in the main continuity, but still, it is these elements of horror within the Spider-Verse and within his own story that inspire more frightening theories to rise to the surface when it comes to the Spider-Man cinematic world and comic book world, especially as it concerns Spider-Man villains. Today we'll be taking a look at some of these theories as we count down the top 10 scary Spider-Man theories. All right, let's get counting. Number 10. Tony Stark created Spider-Man. This theory comes to us from the MCU, and it poses the idea that Tony Stark kept a secret from his young protege, Peter, which is that Stark Industries is actually the company responsible for creating the radioactive spider that transformed Peter. In the cinematic universe, we have assumed Peter Parker's origins, but it has yet to be fully explained, probably because we've already heard it so many times, and everyone is already super familiar with it. But it also makes many wonder about the details involving this version of this story, and any secrets that could be lurking within the retelling of this origins. Number 9. Return to the Raimiverse With Sony's film Morbius set to be released next year, many have theorized as to which cinematic universe the film will be set in, and what universes it could even perhaps connect. A few hints in the trailer led some fans to speculate it could be based in the MCU, which turned out to be an accurate theory after Morbius was confirmed as being considered within the MCU. While some had originally theorized that it being a Sony film should mean that it is simply set in the same universe as Venom. Despite it being confirmed as MCU, some fans have speculated it could be linked to an older Spider-Man cinematic universe as well, the Raimiverse. A Spider-Man universe that some fans loved and other fans hated. So where does this theory come from? Some have pointed to the murderer graffiti featuring Spidey's likeness, spotted in the film as a sign, believing that the artistic rendition of Spider-Man looks more similar to Tobey Maguire's version of the suit than any other. Also, that pose. This would be weird and potentially scary for those who were not so hot on the Spider-Man Raimi-verse. But really though, this theory is pretty out there. Except I guess it's not super out there now that we know that Raimi is going to be directing the new Doctor Strange movie. Number eight, since the beginning. Another theory has posed that Morbius has actually been around potentially in the MCU for longer than we anticipated. With Michael Keaton showing up at the end of the trailer, many have made the assumption that he will be reprising his role as Adrian Toomes, Spider-Man villain, Vulture, despite the fact that no character name has yet been credited to him in the film. And it seems as though Michael Keaton's character knows Morbius by his full name, but how do they know each other? Some have theorized that they met at the end of Spider-Homecoming and that the Morbius film could retcon Morbius as being a potential villain or anti-hero in the MCU for longer than we knew about. Observant fans have even pointed out a character that shuffles past in the background of a shot of Matt Gargan during the post credit scene, when Scorpion asks Vulture about Spider-Man's secret identity, that does seem to have a very similar look beard and hair-wise to Jared Leto's Morbius. Relax. This is not on you. Number 6. Doc Ock Speaking of villains like the Vulture, with so many people hopeful for a potential Sinister Six film, some fans desperately theorized that Morbius's mentor in the trailer, played by Jared Harris, who as of yet is playing an unnamed character, could secretly end up being Dr. Octopus. Sadly, Jared Harris has shut down this theory hard when asked about it in interviews, although he has commented how much he enjoys hearing about all the fans' imaginative theories. Still, if he was actually playing Doc Ock, but it was meant to be a secret, wouldn't he still deny it? As expected, he has been tight-lipped when it comes to discussing his character's true identity in the film. Number 5. Ned Leeds Some fans thought we might see Ned die in Far From Home, but of course this never happened. Phew! But another theory is afoot in regards to what could happen to Ned Leeds' character in the MCU in the next Spider-Man chapter. While he did end up briefly dating Betty Brant, who in the comics ends up becoming his wife, it has led many fans to ponder in what other ways Ned's MCU version could mirror his comic book version. 
Some have speculated that we could even see him become brainwashed and turn into the villain Hobgoblin in Spider-Man 3, as was Ned's fate in the comic book world. So perhaps there is still a risk that things could get bleak for Ned yet. Number four, Kindred. We still have yet to figure out the true identity of this very secretive Spider-Man villain, who claims to be a demon from hell who was once a human living on Earth. We know that Kindred was betrayed by Spider-Man, knows his true identity, and is here to get revenge on both Peter Parker and Norman Osborn. But what we don't know is just who exactly Kindred is, although apparently Norman Osborn does. This has led many fans to theorize on a variety of known characters that the centipede controlling demon Kindred could be. People have suggested everything from the physical manifestation of Peter and MJ's marriage, to their once thought stillborn daughter who was spirited away by Norman Osborn, to Ned Leeds, to Harry Osborn, and even Gwen Stacy or Peter's long dead Uncle Ben are suspect. What is your working theory for Kindred's identity? Do you think it's somebody else? Let us know in the comments. Number three, Mephisto. Mephisto? 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 You can say it either way, I think. Some have suspected that Mephisto could pop up in the MCU should Spider-Man 3 take a different turn. One comic book writer shared their theory of how the third film could potentially adopt a not so well-loved plot, tweaking it to make it usable and hopefully better in the MCU. One more day. Yeah. In the comics, this was a story where Peter randomly makes a deal with Mephisto in order to save Aunt May's life. Now, what does Mephisto want? To erase MJ and Peter's marriage. What? Weirdly specific, Mephisto. In the MCU, the writer posed that Peter could meet Mephisto through a team up with Doctor Strange and could potentially make a deal with him in order to help out the Doctor. Mephisto instead would ask that Peter's memory be erased from the world, both as Spider-Man and Peter Parker. To protect his loved ones, Tom Holland's Spider-Man would of course be fine with this and accept this sacrifice. This would allow Peter Parker to leave the MCU if necessary without much question, freeing him up to appear in more Sony films in the future. In this future, it was theorized that Peter Parker might then adopt the name Ben Riley and try to do good and fight baddies on the down low so as not to nullify the deal made with Mephisto. Mephisto, 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 Mephisto? Number two, Norman Osborn. I've talked about Norman Osborn and my desire to see him in the MCU before, but there is more and more evidence piling up with each movie that we've seen to hint that this theory could very much become a terrifying reality. Not a terrifying reality for Osborn fans, of course, but for Spider-Man, it could end up being very bad. Some people even think he might be the mastermind helping to fund JJ's modern Daily Bugle, and even that he might have been the one to purchase the Avengers Tower. He could also potentially be the mystery buyer alluded to in Ant-Man and the Wasp. All this means that he could even be the new big bad for not just Spider-Man, but for the entire MCU. What could be scarier than that? And for our top spot, it's time to take it to that bad type of scary. This theory is about the comic limited Spider-Man series written by J.J. Abrams and his son, Henry. This one's scary because the writing in it is questionable. And we still have two issues left. Ooh, how will we handle these last two issues? Is there any way for this series to be redeemed? The story is about Peter Parker's young son, Ben, who has manifested powers similar to his father, but was raised by a very patient Aunt May, as Peter had abandoned him after the death of MJ, who was obviously Ben's mother as well. The supposed death. They thought she was dead, but they didn't know. The end of issue three leaves us on a cliffhanger with a goofy old Tony Stark, adult Ironheart, young angsty Ben and his sassy friend and maybe soon to be girlfriend, Faye Ito, heading out to try and save Peter who is being held captive and being kind of used as a weapon by villain Cadaverous. But they are interrupted when there is an explosion and they are confronted by the old dead Avengers, reanimated and integrated with tech, obviously working for Cadaverous. The comic ends with the promise that there is no winning, only Cadaverous. Oh boy. So the theory for what will happen in the long delayed issue four of five, ugh, two issues left, goes like this. Ben will be unable to save his father, but will be able to stop Cadaverous and will become a sort of new Spider-Man. He may even have to face his dead father and mother who are being controlled by Cadaverous. He may have to fight both of them. But I kind of hope instead that this comic just ends with Ben waking up and realizing this was all a bad dream. 
Also, I'm sorry if you really like that comic. I have been reading it. I do find it entertaining, so I will give it that. It is entertaining. Thank you so much for watching, Nerd Squad. I hope you enjoyed this list. What are some of the scariest Spider-Man theories that you have heard? Are you a fan of JJ and Henry Abrams' series? Do you like it? If you do, let us know. Let us know what you like about it. Or does it also irk you as well? What next MCU film are you most excited to see? Who do you think will be the main villain in the third Spider-Man film? Let us know in the comments below. And be sure to smash that subscribe and ring -a -ling our bell if you haven't already. It'll help to keep you informed on all our new nerdy content. And you know I love it when you do. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight, reminding you, as always, to stay nerdy, YouTube.